blood. There shouldn't be any blood. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Rochelle here. So if you don't already know me, I am a lifestyle vlogger, YouTuber, so be sure to subscribe. My videos are fun and great. <laughs> and for those of you who are returning, yeah, I'm finally doing my birth story. It's long overdue, but it's coming today. You got it. As you know, or don't already know, I am currently living in Ghana, and I gave birth to my son July 31st here in Ghana. So I want to give you a little bit of backstory to the birth itself and my previous experience with my two children. So I have a daughter, she is 14, Naomi, and a son, he is 11. So it's been a long time since I've had a baby. Oh, my son's name is Jordan. It's been a long time since I've been pregnant, okay? So let me give you some backstory here. I am currently living in Ghana and I decided that I wanted to do a home birth. And the reason I thought I'd be comfortable doing that was because my son, I had him completely naturally in Canada, in the hospital. And my daughter, I was actually induced for her because the placenta wasn't making any more amniotic fluid or something like that. So they ended up inducing me and that went fine as well. Um, I had her about a week before her actual due date. But otherwise, my, my pregnancies were normal, and I thought, well, I have nothing to really worry about, so I'm sure I could do a home birth. And a lot of people were asking me if I was going to go back to Toronto to give birth, but I didn't feel like that was necessary. I felt just comfortable and safe, and um, I didn't really think there were going to be any complications. So I decided to, you know, stay here. And even if there were complications, oh well, I guess it depends now. If I had a certain level of complications that I know about, like any health conditions or major concerns, maybe then I would have went back to Toronto. Yeah, but otherwise I felt comfortable and I was good to have him here. So I sought um, a doula midwife who is living here to help me do my home birth. Well, she was supposed to, but that's part of the story. Okay, so my due date for my son was actually July 19th, okay? And I expected him to come on his due date or pretty close. And that's because my son, his due date was August 31st. And at the stroke of midnight, I went into labor. So I went into labor at like 12, he was born at 10. So I felt that my um, pregnancy would have been predictable. He would have been born around the same time, boys and girls. So my children were arriving from Toronto a couple days before my due date, right? And they did not know I was pregnant. That's a long story, don't even ask, but it was a surprise. So when they came, um, or before they were coming, I was trying not to be active, I wasn't trying to do anything, I was just trying to lay down because I was certain that if I did too much, my water would have broke or I would have went into labor and I did not want that to happen until they arrived. So I took it easy and I was just like walking on eggshells, okay? So once they were here, I was like, all right, baby, let her rip. <laughs> so I got my doula to give me a sweep on the 19th, my due date, right? So I'm thinking, yeah, Baby come in a day, everything's ready, clothes washed, I'm ready. She gives me the sweep. I feel like some Braxton Hicks are contractions, right? So I'm thinking, all right, we're getting the ball rolling. And I also took some um, castor oil that evening, right? So in hindsight, I probably would have took the castor oil before she did the sweep. But let me ask you something. Someone was saying that the castor oil can make the baby poo, so it's not a good idea to take it to induce labor. I've never heard of that until now. I've even taken castor oil with, I think, Jordan, and nothing happened. But comment down below, have you heard of that, or have you, have you had that experience yourself? Let me know, so comment down below. Although I heard that rumor, I was like, listen, I don't care. This baby coming out. I took the risk, if there was a risk. But everything I saw online did not say anything about castor oil causing that. So I felt pretty comfortable, pretty safe. Took the castor oil, thinking something was gonna happen. 
nothing happened. So I'm thinking, okay, well, it's all right. I'm sure in a couple days, things will get moving. Nothing. <sighs> okay, so at this point, I'm like sad and depressed. I'm like, damn, I do not want to be pregnant any longer. This is like annoying. Maybe like a week in, I fell. I actually fell, like toppled over onto the, onto the concrete, onto the ground. I didn't fall on my belly. I kind of fell to the side. And I don't know what happened. It's like my knee just like gave way and I fell. I'm okay, like nothing serious. But again, I'm thinking like, I need to have this baby. I just want to be normal again. So it's a couple of days later. I'm about 10 days overdue at this point, okay? And I fell. So I'm thinking I need to find a way to get them to give me a sweep. But I knew they weren't gonna give you a sweep for no reason. And if they did, they probably would wanna admit me you know, to like induce my entire labor and have me have the baby at the hospital, which is not what I planned. I was planning a home birth. So I'm like, how can I get them to, you know? So anyway, I go to a hospital that's five minutes from my house. It's called the Ghana Canada Hospital. So I go there and I just ask them, hi, I'm overdue. Can you guys give me a sweep? And they're like, uh, no. <laughs> so they're like, that's not a reason for us to like, do that so i was like all right thanks <laughs> so i left so i actually went to um the university of ghana medical center so it's like state-of-the-art hospital or medical facility and it's pretty big it's pretty um new as well that's where i've been going for my antenatal appointments or prenatal appointments so i go there and i'm thinking i need to tell them something so that they'll like, you know, look into this. So I'm like, I fell. So I go and I tell them I fell. And of course they want to check the baby, the heart rate, the this, the that. So they ad admit me or whatever. So they're checking me out and everything is okay. And they're like, is there anything else? So I'm like, well, you know, I'm 10 days overdue. Can we just do a sweep? So they actually tried to keep me. Like they actually were like, we're going to induce you right now. I'm like, no, I just want a sweep. Just give me the sweep and I'll come back if anything happens. So they gave me the sweep and I went home. So I felt like I'm not going to waste this opportunity. I'm going to also get the castor oil again. Even though, you know, but no, I didn't feel anything was going to happen. So I got the castor oil. They did the sweep. I went home and I was just so desperate to like go into labor. And I just remember that I just like gave up. I just felt like, you know what? I'm gonna stop wanting to give birth. I'm gonna stop wanting this. I'm just gonna accept whatever happens, whatever will be will be, and I'm gonna just let it go and not be like obsessed about going into labor and having a baby. So that night I go to sleep at around 12.30 and I'm feeling like the tightness in my stomach, but I'm thinking it's just Braxton Hicks as usual, not gonna develop into anything else, right? So I'm getting the Braxton Hicks and they're getting stronger. I'm like, wait a minute, could this be it? So my stomach is feeling really, really tight and it starts to sting. I'm like, this is definitely labor. So I call my doula. Now, this is the first time I've called her and she was not able to answer my phone call. This was the first time. Anytime I've called her at like any time of the night, she's answered. So this is literally the first time she didn't answer. But I wasn't really worried because I just started the contractions and I'm sure it was going to be a 10 hour ordeal like my son. So I wasn't thinking anything. So I'm like, she'll call me back or she'll answer her phone soon, which she did answer her phone. So I just told her, you know, I think I'm going into labor. Now she actually lives two hours away. She lives out of town. So when she takes you as a patient, she'll stay in the neighborhood and get a, like get an Airbnb and she'll stay around for like seven or eight days. So because I had my son on my due date, I didn't anticipate being overdue. So she stayed around the area like a couple days before my due date and after my due date. Obviously nothing happened, so she went back to her hometown. She's like, call me when something happens. And it wasn't for a long time that something didn't happen. So she would have been waiting in an Airbnb for a long, long, long time. Anyway, 
She finally answers. So she's like, okay, I'm on my way. Just, you know, keep calm and labor and everything like that until I get there. And I'm okay with this. I'm fine. Like, I'm not even worried. I'm like, okay, we just got to go through the process, right? But myself and my partner and Naomi was actually here too. So, you know, I'm breathing and doing this and doing that. But I'm feeling like, wow, this is intense. I was like, I do not remember suffering like this in the beginning of labor with, with my son. I'm like, damn, this is really hurting. So I decide to labor on the toilet. So I seen this, um, you know, these YouTube videos where you just go on the toilet like back ways and the tank, you can like rest your hands on the tank or whatever. So I went on the toilet and I was, again, just breathing and laboring and the fire pain that I felt, shocking. I was literally screaming. I was like, <laughs> literally, I'm not even exaggerating, okay? So just imagine that scream, but like full, full force screaming. It was crazy. I was thinking, why is this so painful? The, the YouTube videos that I've been watching people doing um, natural birth, they're like, <sighs> no, me, I was dying. I was even thinking to myself, you fool, you are too old for this. Why are you even having any more kids? You should have just went to the hospital, got the epidural. Like, so many things are going through my mind and I was thinking, damn, this was a mistake. I should have brought my butt to the hospital, got an epidural. Like that's how intense the pain was and I just couldn't believe. And I was thinking, damn, eight more hours of this? I'm going to die. I'll die first. So my partner called the doula just to update her and see where she is. And at that time, there was like bright red drops of blood in the toilet. So he was telling her, you know, there's, there's bright red blood. She's like, wait a minute, blood? There shouldn't be any blood. That's like, that's not a good sign. So she goes, go to the hospital and I'll meet you at the hospital. Great. So I don't have a car in Ghana. We called the Uber Bolt. No, this is like 3.30 a.m., right? So we got one and we get in the car. Luckily, the hospital is only five minutes away from my house. So we're driving there and I'm trying to hold something. So when I was on the toilet, I actually felt this intense pressure. It was a pressure. It wasn't just contractions. It was like pressure almost to push down. But I wasn't thinking about pushing because it's only been like an hour and a half of the contraction starting. There's no way I could want to push right now. So I did not consider that that could be a possibility at all. So we're in the car and I'm getting the same bearing down feeling like I want to push. But I'm not really recognizing what that feeling is because my mind is just not there that I would be pushing. Like I'm not thinking that. So I'm getting the feeling and I'm like holding it. I'm trying to hold it in, you know what I mean? So I get to the gate of the hospital. It was closed because it's like 3 a.m. So the gates, not the hospital. So they are opening the gates and I decide, let me see what the heck's going on down there. So I put my hand down there and I feel like a round ball, a round smooth ball. I'm like, oh my God, the baby's head is like emerging and I had no idea. So I'm like, dang, you know what? I might as well just have this baby in this cab. I cannot take the pressure. I cannot take the pain. I, I just want to get this over with. So I literally almost go to push the baby out. And my partner's like, no, just hold it, just hold it. I'm like, I can't. Ah! So finally my doula, she opens the car door. She's like, wait. Do not push him out. I was like, I have to, I have to. He's right there, I can feel it. I felt a head, oh my God, he's killing me. Ah! She's like, no, don't do it. I was like, oh, fine. <laughs> so she gets a wheelchair for me and we go inside the hospital. So at this point, I am begging for the epidural, okay? I'm like, please help me. Because the pain was so intense, right? So she's like, don't worry, you're not gonna need an epidural. I was like, yes, I am, I want an epidural. <laughs> I was going crazy. So they get me onto the bed and I said, I felt something, I felt the head, I felt it. Can you see it, like, is, is the head there? So they're like, no, it's the water. I'm like, the water? 
So the sack was actually coming through. And I was like, what the heck? So in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, if it's a sack, somebody pop it. Somebody get a hooky thing or a pin, just pop it. And the way I knew about asking them to break my water for me was when I was having my son, I was having the same like water, um, the bubble coming through. And I was asking them, what is that that I'm feeling? They're like, oh, it's just the water. So I'm like, okay, so can you pop it? They're like, oh yeah, we can pop it. So why didn't you pop it? <laughs> I'm thinking if they know about popping the water and my water is trying to break through, just give me a hand and pop it for me. <laughs> so I told them to pop the water for my son. And as soon as the water popped for Jordan, as soon as they broke the water for me, I had it in like 20 minutes. So they would have left me to make my body contract to squeeze the water instead of just giving me a hand and popping it for me. Self-advocate. Anyway, it was the same situation. So I told them, just pop it for me. So they popped it, right? So they pop it for me. And that's when everything, literally, it's not, it doesn't even speed up. Almost immediately after, I was ready to push the baby out. So I pushed out his head, and I think in two pushes, I pushed out the rest of his body. Maybe I pushed for 10 minutes because he was, you know, he was right there. And that was it. I was free. <laughs> so when he came out, he just came out like this. Like, he wasn't crying. He wasn't really moving a lot. But he was okay. So he actually had a little bit of low blood oxygen and he was a little bit blue. So they took him to give him some oxygen in his nose. Here's a little picture of the nose thing. And then they put him under the heat lamp just to get his blood like flowing in his body and for him to turn like bright pink, like more pink. So they did that and everything was okay. So me now, me now, my one biggest wish or nightmare was tearing. I didn't want to tear and I thought there has to be a way to avoid tearing. Boys and girls, I tore third degree tear. I got a third degree tear. Third degree. Like that is almost the worst tear you can get. She must have been sewing me for 45 minutes. 45 minutes and it wasn't like no gentle sewing. She was like rubbing, she, you know, you have to get the blood so you can see, right? So she's patting the blood off and I'm thinking, damn lady, I just had a baby. Can you just do it gently? But anyways, they're not like that here. They're not like that here and probably outside of Western countries, I just feel like in general, like healthcare workers are not like gentle or like extra this or extra that it just is what it is comment down below if you know what i'm saying anyway so she sold me about the 45 minutes so that was like my nightmare that came true that was the only thing i really really wanted to avoid and it happened yes out of my control what can i say what can i do but anyway i guess she sold me up fine so i'm okay now but it was very painful after like going home and walking and moving around, it's quite painful. With Naomi and Jordan, I must have had a two degree tear. They did sew me, it was like 10 minutes. So it was very shocking to be sewn up for like 45 minutes. So that is my birth story guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I should get Bop Bop and show you him, but he's sleeping. I'll show you him in another clip. But yeah, so um, that is my story you guys. Comment down below if you've ever had that similar experience with the um, castor oil to induce your labor or if you've heard about it being dangerous for babies and like pooing in the, uh, in the womb before they're born. Comment down below if you've heard of that before this. Yeah, so that is the end. That's my birth story. So um, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. But yeah, that's it for my birth story. Also, if you love this shirt, 
I, I have the shirt made, like I designed it kind of. So I don't have any um, pants on, so I can't stand up. <laughs> but it's like a wrap top that I made. And I'm thinking of making them for you guys. You can buy it as well. Handcrafted, beautiful um, Ankara design from yours truly here in Ghana. So if you guys are actually interested and you love this shirt, send me a DM in my um, inbox, in my um, Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, send me a DM and let me know what you think. I mean, I only have one design right now. So if you guys love it, I think I'll probably get some made for you guys if you're interested. So send me a DM if you would love to purchase one. Okay, you guys, that's the end of my video. So I'm going to see you next time. Love you. Bye.